Welcome to a new episode of my Linux PCI driver tutorials. Today I will show you how to access memory or I.O. space on a PCI or PCI Express device from a Linux driver. But before I start we have to take about resource management in Linux. So if you are writing a PCI driver and you want to access BOS zero, what you normally do is you will reserve the memory behind BOS zero so only your driver can access it and other programs or drivers can't mess around with it. You can do this by using managed or unmanaged functions. So what's the difference here? If you're using unmanaged functions, when you are reserving some resources, you have to free them when the driver is unloaded manually. So you have to write some code to free the resources. And if you forget to free the resources and you want to reload a driver, maybe it cannot access the resources because they are still blocked from the last run. This can't happen if you're using managed resources because with managed um, functions, resources will be freed when the driver is unloaded. So it's a, yeah, a kind of dynamical um, resource management the kernel takes care of. Therefore, I would recommend you to use managed um, functions because it makes everything a little bit easier and you cannot forget to free something. So, I will only show you in this video how to use managed functions. If you're interested in how to use unmanaged functions, I've made a video earlier where I show you how to use them and I will put a link into the description. Okay, but before we access any memory, we have to know which memory we want to access. And therefore, let's take a look at the manual of my PCI TTL32IO GPIO expander card I will use in this tutorials. Here on this page, you can see the memory map. Our GPIO card only uses um, bar zero. And here we can see the memory offsets and the registers which are behind the offsets. So here at address, fc hexadecimo, we can get the state of IO pin 1 to 8 on FD from 9 to 16 and so on and so forth. So if we have configured output 1 to 8 to input, we can read back the state of the inputs and if we have um, configured the IOs for outputs, we can write the output state over these registers here. Down here at offset F8, we have the direction settings. So when we're writing bit 1, for example, we can set the direction of IO 9 to 16. By, if we're writing a 0 to it, there will be inputs. And the um, default state of all registers is 0, so after reboot, all, um, all IOs are set to input mode and we can directly read out the register or the IO state over these registers. So what I will do today is I want to write a small driver which will read in the state of these four buttons and I want to set turn these LEDs on. Okay, so here I'm connected to the PC where I've plugged in my PCI card and I am in my GPO card PCI TTL32 IO folder, which contains the source code for our driver and the make file for our driver. Okay, so now let's open up the source file and let's start coding. So the first thing I will do is I will add some defines here. So offset IO state was FC and offset direction was F8. Okay. And here I will do all my memory and IO space accesses over here in the probe function. So the first thing I will do is I will create a new variable called status where I will save the return values of different functions. And then I need a pointer to access my memory and the pointer is from the type void IO mem pointer and I will call it pointer boss zero. Okay, now I am in the probe function, but before we are accessing the memory, let's check how much memory is available. So I will use the function PCI 
resource len to get the size of bar zero. As an argument, I have to pass the PCI dev struct pointer from our current selected device as argument one. And argument two is the bar I'm interested in, which is bar zero in my case. And then I can print out PCI TTL 32 IO size of bar zero is d bytes status. And in case um, status is not equal to 256, an error occurred because our bar zero should be 256 bytes in size. Okay. And if I want to see at which physical address my bar is mapped, I can use the following function. Is mapped to, and here our control, okay. And here I will use PCI resource start. As an argument again, I need to point to my PCI device and the bar I'm interested in, and that's it. Okay, now let's enable the device. For enabling a device, I will call the function PCI managed enable device. And as an argument, I have to pass in a pointer to my device. What this function does is it will wake up the device if it is in a sleep state and it will enable memory and IO space accesses. But if status is smaller than zero, an error occurred. Error okay. could not um, enable the device and let's return our error code here. Okay, now in the next step I will reserve the bar zero resources. So I will reserve the memory behind bar zero. Therefore I will use the function PCI managed IO map regions. The first argument again is a pointer to our PCI device. The second one are some flags and as I want to reserve bar zero I can use bit, the bit macro to um, convert bar zero to a valid flag. And the last argument could, could be a string how I want to name this reserved memory and I will use the module's name, which is behind the macro cabled mod name. Okay, and once again, if the status is smaller than zero, an error occurred. And this means in this case, bar zero is already in use. So maybe another driver is already using bar zero. Okay, and now. I want to um, get a pointer to bar zero and I will store it here in my bar zero pointer. So I can do this with the function PCI manage IO map table. I have to pass in the device and this function will return an array and then I can use the bar number as an index. So I'm interested in bar zero. Now I have to check if the pointer here is a null pointer, because if so, an error occurred. Error invalid pointer for bar zero, and I will return minus one here. Okay, and now let's finally access the memory space. So first let's read out the state of our buttons or let's read all the inputs. So I can do this with the following function. Um, GPIO state D word. And the function I will use is IO read 32, which is the bit width. And then as an argument, I have to give put in my pointer 
and I have to add an offset so I will add PCI TTL 32 IO offset IO state okay and that should be it yep in case I want to do a byte access I could use um, IO read 8 instead and if I just want to access a word I could use IO read 16. Okay and then in the next step I will configure byte 0 to all outputs. I can do this with the command IO write 8 so I want to write a byte. The first argument is the value I want to write which is 1 in this case and then again I have to use my bar 0 pointer and add the offset. direction and that's it and once again the number here is the access width of my IO write so 16 would be a word and so on and so forth and as these GPIOs are connected in a way so I have to write a low signal to them I don't have to do any additional writes to turn these LEDs on Okay, so now let's try to compile it and let's see if everything works fine. So I will call make and we'll see how much mistakes I've made. Okay, this looks good. Okay, and now first we want to read the state of these buttons. So if I press a button, the input will be low. And this first button here is mapped to GPIO 0. So when I press it, I should read uh, back an E hexadecimal. So let's try to load the module. And I will press the button here. You see the lights turned on. And if we look at the kernels log, you can see um, when we our read returns an E here. So this indicates this button was pressed. Okay, great. So we have successfully accessed um, the memory space. Of course, all the functions also work for IO space accesses. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.